What? Y'all are. Y'all are awesome. Fired up. Holy Ghost bunch of people. Amen. Well, we got some good stuff coming up. First of the year, we're going to be getting more into the gifts. We just got through talking about tongues, speaking in tongues, and giving you some information out of the Scripture. How much, there's so much Scripture in the Bible about tongues, it's amazing. Anybody that believe that it's uh, passed away and gone away, I think maybe part of their brain's gone away because it's still here and it's for today. Amen? So let's start off in the book of Matthew and let's go to the 17th chapter. And we're going to talk about the works of the Holy Spirit and uh, the rest of the year. We're going to talk about faith. We're going to talk about some things that will cause you to be in tune as you start learning about the gifts so that it'll be easier for you to grab it and flow in it. Because talking about the gifts isn't trying to explain to you something how other people flow in it. It's, it's teaching you to flow in it so that you will lay hands on the sick. You will minister. You will cast out devils. You will walk in newness of life. Not other people, but you. Look at the person beside you and say, he's talking to you. I'll guarantee you I'm not talking to you. Now let's see, we got 17 up. He starts out on the verse that I give you up there saying, How be it, this kind, go, this kind goeth not out but by prayer and fasting. But because of time, y'all have got that chapter, you just read it. Let me just jump into the story. There was this little boy. He was all messed up and sick. And the disciples went to cast the devil out of the little fella. And it just wouldn't go out. And so they freaked out. Jesus heard what was going on. He comes over and... He says, how long have I got to be with you to show you the Father? What is going on with you guys? It's like this. Watch. And he told the devil to come out and it left. Well, when he got by himself, here come his disciples. You got to understand, they have been commissioned to cast out devils, raise the dead, heal the sick. They've been going everywhere doing that. They've been busy in the ministry for two years, wide open, and all of a sudden, they can't even cast the devil out of a little kid. And they're like, what's up? And we need to learn from that. Are you all right? You can be casting out devils for years, and one day it stops, and you wonder what's going on. And I'll tell you why it stops. It's because of your relationship with him. You can get so busy for God, you don't have time to be with God. Just got a vision, got a vision, got to go do this, got to go do that. You ever thought he might want you to just stop and sit down and and just meditate on him, his goodness, and just worship him. Just raise your hands up and say, you're just so awesome. Listen, when you're by yourself and you're in pain and sickness has attacked your body and you're laying there going, I'm healed by the stripes of Jesus, and you're calling things that are not as though they were. You're calling things that just be not. It be not, but I'm acting like it is, and I'm just wide open with it. While you're doing that, your mind is like, oh, I must be an idiot. But what's so wonderful when a little time goes by and you begin to feel the healing of that gospel that you took. You need to take a couple of gospels every day. And then you start, real, man, I'm feeling better. Oh, there's a manifestation of this. And you stop and think to yourself, all the people that told you it's going to get worse, they understand how this is. They know how this works. It doesn't get better. You need to prepare. Always be ready for worse. And you keep hearing and hearing. While you're trying to believe God, you got all your friends hollering around, let me help you, Job. Are you all right? Here, Job, let me give you a hand. And so praise God, the word works. And when I use the word, then every sickness and every disease has to bow its knee. Everything that is assigned against me is broken by the power of God. I stand on, on the word. Isaiah 54, 17. No weapon. A weapon. No weapon. I don't care who forms it. No weapon formed against me. It will not prosper. My right standing is with God and nowhere else. And that's why it can't touch me. Anyway, in this chapter, we find out where Jesus is talking about it and he's saying, how long have I got to be with you? And they said, yeah, but we got to know one thing. He said, well, what's the matter with you boys? And they said, why couldn't, why couldn't we do it? Now notice the difference. Why couldn't we? It isn't that they didn't want to. There's no, we didn't want to do that. Man, they were doing the same thing they've been doing for a couple of years. They walked up to that kid and said, in the name of Jesus, come out. Nothing happened. And they, they're like, Jesus, what's going on? And he told them, he said, this kind 
does not come out except by prayer and fasting. And he had just explained to them that the reason that he doesn't come out is because they have now mingled over into a realm of unbelief. Disciples that cast out devils are in a position in ministry one day. There ain't no devil coming out. And Jesus had to say to them, how long have I got to be with you? Here's how you do this. Come out. And the devil said, ah, little kid got set free. And we have to understand that God has called us to walk in the anointing that he put in us. It's him in you, it's not you. Jesus said, it's the Father in me that does the work, not me. It's the anointing in that word and in that power and that act of God that causes the power of God to move and manifest and just do supernatural things in people's lives. When we just believe him and walk in it, just talk it. I got tickled teaching on tongues and went home and turned on the Believer's Voice of Victory. If you have Dish Network, it's on channel 265. And we watch it all the time. But I went home and turned it, and it was funny. After I got through teaching here and went home, Kenneth Copeland was teaching on tongues, using the same scriptures, saying a lot of the same thing. I looked over at my wife. I said, you delegate, we could have just played that. So anyway, it, it was good. You'll enjoy it. You need to get in the Word, stay in the Word. We have so many opportunities with, with television and radio. I know there's a bunch of junk on it, but it's like everything in life. You pick, you choose. And the word says choose life that both you and your seed shall live. Can I get an amen? So what he's trying to tell them is what comes out by prayer and fasting is doubt and unbelief. Not the devil. You don't go pray and fast to get strong enough to go cast out some devil. Now praying and fasting is good at all times. You should pray and fast, especially, yes, if you're going to cast out devils. But you need to understand that casting out devils is based on the name of Jesus. Hello. And faith in him. Nothing else. Has nothing to do with your works, how great you are. It is faith in God. It's faith in his word. And when you speak, you expect. Oh, man, if the church would ever realize that. When you speak, you expect. He says, if you believe, you receive. When you ask. The same thing, isn't it? I believe I received when I asked. I expect. When I pray according to the will of God and the word of God, he always shows up. The only time God never shows up is when I miss it. When I pray outside of his will, outside of his word, I miss it. But I stay in it, baby, it is on. Amen? Oh, God is so good. So he's teaching us that this kind only comes out by prayer and fasting. The, the lesson in that is to understand that unbelief can creep into your life overnight. It can. And the Bible teaches us in Isaiah 55 that unbelief is an evil heart. Isn't that a trip? You wouldn't think of an unbelief being an evil heart. But in God's mind, unbelief is, that's what evil is. Most people think of evil, they picture a witch flying on a broom. <laughs> but that's exactly that's exactly what it is. I'm going to have to move up a little bit and kind of speed myself up. Y'all not mad at me, are you? If you don't mind, let's go over to John chapter 3. Let's go to John chapter 3. Let's go to verse 27 because we've got to understand where we're from. Do you know where you're from? Look at the person beside you and tell them, I am from above. That is exactly where you came from, was from above. Let me get over to John. It probably wouldn't hurt. Y'all funny. He is good. And I'm pumped up, and I love it. My wife's at the beach, and she's uh, watching. Hey, honey, you know I love you. Be ready. Daddy coming. I can't tell you. I got to go to the beach and play with the grandbaby grandma. I can hear her right now. Y'all don't know it, but when church is over, she's like, stop that. Do not be doing that. Well, that's just like telling me to do it. <laughs> I like to play with the grandbaby's grandma. Amen. Someday I'll be playing with the great grandbaby's great grandma. All right. It gets greater and greater. All right. Amen. We are in heavenly places. Can I get an amen? John chapter 3, look at verse 27. And while you're looking at it, grin at somebody. 
John answered and he said, <laughs> you guys are funny. I wish y'all would stop, but I can hear you. You think I can't hear you, but I can hear you. John answered and said, a man can receive nothing except it's given him from heaven. You yourselves bear me witness that I said, I am not the Christ, but I am sent before him. And he hath the bride is the bridegroom, but the friend of the bridegroom, which stands and heareth him, rejoice greatly, because the bridegroom's voice, and this is my joy, wherein love is fulfilled. When love is fulfilled, it means obedience. It doesn't mean an emotion. When it says love's fulfilled, it's not the ecstasy of an emotional flesh feeling. <laughs> love's fulfilled. It's when you obey the word. Anytime you do the word, that's how you love God. Haven't you ever thought to yourself, how can I love God like I do my mama, my baby, my husband? How can I love God? I mean, there's people that love their pets. And in their mind, they're like, I know I'm supposed to love God more than I do this pet, but how? How do you get to it? And the reason they're saying how is because they're thinking emotions. And then how can I get my emotions to the place that they're more overwhelmed about who God is in my life, my emotions and my feelings, than anything. Well, that can happen, but that's not what it's about. It's about living by faith and not by sight. You're the head and not the tail. A word out of the word. You are those who prophesy. If you ever wake up to how powerful the words in your mouth are and that rudder, that tongue that's in your mouth, and boy, you guard that thing and say, baby, I can't, I can't say anything negative because it'll work. I can't speak something that'll hurt because it'll work. If I criticize somebody, it works. So since I know that words work, I want to be creative. I want to act like God acts. Say what God said, say. Be like God. That's where you came from. Oh, well. Y'all getting mad now, I can tell. But I'm getting wired up. And then he says, and you yourselves bear me witness that I said I'm not the Christ. And he says, he that has the bride is the bridegroom. Mm -mm -mm. But the friend of the bridegroom, which stands and hears him, rejoices greatly because of the bridegroom's voice. Voice. Your A word out of the word. It's the voice that you listen to. Have you not ever thought about the simple things that when God says, meditate on my word day and night, meditate on what? My word. And what does meditate mean? It means to mutter, to ponder, to think, to utter. So while you're meditating, you're, you're mumbling scripture, you're thinking the scriptures, you're speaking to the Lord and you're thinking about it. You meditate. Anytime you meditate, that is a visit with Jesus. I can hear immature people right now that think they're so smart. Uh, what do you mean a visit with Jesus? I'm always with Jesus. He's in me. Yeah. I know a lot of people that live in the same house. One's back yonder and one's over there. Y'all looking at me funny. He lives in this house. Let's have a party. There's no, let's don't waste this. If he's in there, Let's shake the house up and let's have a good time. Do you know my own healing, I decree it because this is God's house. I just don't believe God wants to live in a sick body. And when mine gets attacked, that's what I start hollering. Hey, this ain't my body. You said glorify you in the body and in the spirit, which are God's and not my own. I'm only guarding your vineyard. I speak over what you told me to speak over, and I love you for it. You excite me, oh God. I mean, where else can you live to where the power of words rule and reign and dominate? When I go in prayer, what makes God move? Prayer, words. When I come over and minister to somebody, words of encouragement and strength. What's touching them? Words. Words. How do you even get saved? If a man confess with his mouth the Lord Jesus and believe that God raised him from the dead, he shall be, he shall, he shall, I'm not talking about the gas station, he shall be. Hello. Man, you got... That's because you came from above. 
God created the earth and before the foundation of the earth was even spoken or even fixed or finished, before the first piece of dust hit, he already planned you. He already knew what you were going to do. He already had it all laid out just for you. And now here you are. And the enemy wants your mind to go around and go, well, you know, I just don't, I don't know how. Listen, your mind has to be renewed by the word. If your mind is not in this word, it will get hooked up with this world. And the world will suck you under, man. It, has, it loves its own, and it doesn't care about anything. Are you all right? But when you walk in the kingdom, it's a different world. When I watch news, I see two kingdoms. When I see black and whites riding on the street and fighting and fussing, talking about a race war, I'm going, that's not the church. That's not the kingdom of God. That is nothing but the devil. I don't care what you call it. It's demonic. And we must intercede and pray and be the example to the rest of the world that you don't live like that. We cover each other's backs. We're Americans. There's people all around this world wanting to attack both of us. They want the blacks and the whites dead. Well, I say black and white, let's hook up together and let's tell the enemy, you can't touch it. We're two standing agreement. Hallelujah, our God will move. Somebody say amen. Let's quit being in disagreement and let's get in an agreement. In the military, we call it a code of honor. I'll watch your back. You watch my back. And I don't have to turn around and look behind me because I know you're there. That's the spirit that's supposed to be in the church and in the body. We're not the criticizers in the yard of this. We're not the selfish ones who wants everything for ourselves. We're the givers. We're the builders. We're the foundation layers. We can take pain. We can take some suffering. We can take anything that's thrown against us because our God will deliver us. He will give us the strength, the power, and the anointing to overcome every single bit of it. So just let it come on. Glory to God. We're like an old duck sitting out in a good old rainstorm. It it might look wet and bad, but I'm here to tell you something, baby. That duck's dry. Oh, yeah, lift his wing up. There's no water under there. How does he stay so dry? The oil. The oil that lubricates his feathers causes him to be that way. So the world repels off of the duck. He's in the water. He's just not of the water. I'm in the world. I'm just not of the world. Are y'all all right? Oh, man, I'm pumped up. Let me hurry up. I'm trying not to watch that clock. It affects my thinking. Whoo! He must increase. I must decrease. I could preach on that right there. The more you decrease, the more he'll increase in you. It's in you. And he that comes from above, that's where you're from, is above all. That makes a lot of sense. If you're from above, you're above all. I figured that one out all by myself. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> y'all funny. It's a he that is of the earth. Anybody know anybody from the earth? The earthly. <laughs> it's called an earth being. An earthian. And he that cometh from heaven is above all. Where did Jesus come from? I'll guarantee you. And what he's seen and heard he testifies. No man received his testimony. He that received his testimony has set to his seal that God is true. For he whom God hath sent speaks words of God. Isn't that something? I'm from God, he says. And God is in me. And I have something for you from God. Gee, I wonder what it could be. A vet? Big bank account? What would he have for me? I have brought to you, say of the Lord, the words of God. The greatest gift you'll ever get. It'll change your life, change your marriage, change your attitude, change your job, change your finances, changes your circumstances, changes your perspective. The word of God changes everything about you. Everything. It takes you from immaturity to maturity. It takes you from sickness to healing, from poverty to prosperity. Yes, it does. It's a good thing. It's not a bad thing. Y'all sure are quiet when you are to be noisy. Oh, well. Because whom God has sent speaks the words of God, for God gives not the spirit by measure to him. I tell you, God has an unmeasurable spirit. 
The Father loves the Son and has given all things into his hand. Notice his love was giving. He that believes on the Son has everlasting life, and he that believes not on the Son shall not see life. But the wrath of God abides on him. People read that last part like God's mad at you. Say, oh, or the wrath of God will abide upon you. He, he's just simply telling you, with God, you're delivered, protected, you're all right. But without God, hey, you're just like a duck at duck season. You're on your own. You're just on your own. Are you all right? I'm telling you, I, mm, I don't know if I'm going to start casting out. Let's go to Ephesians 2 and 6. Let me get them off of this page. Now, this is what the Word says. Now, we've come from heaven. That's where we come from. That's, look at somebody and say, that's where we come from. I'm getting tickled at y'all. I said, we come from heaven. All y'all looking around, is he crazy? We all came from hell. We didn't come from heaven. No, you came from heaven. You've just been acting like you came from that other place. You come from heaven. Now, what we're going to do is get you to start acting heavenly. Yeah, yeah act a little heavenly. You ain't mad, are you? All right, uh, let, let me just get in my Bible and, and, and get it myself. Y'all are absolutely hilarious. Y'all are the funniest people I think I've ever met. And God called me to pester you. I don't know what you did or what I did, but here we are. <laughs> Y'all so funny. All right, uh, because of time, and I got a lot I'd like to do in next Sunday, I'll be getting in some more about the oracles of God. Remember where the Bible says, if any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. Oracles are divine authority. There's no higher power than an oracle. And he says, when you talk, talk oracles. When you speak, speak the oracles of God, the divine authority of who he is and what he said. Agree with him and watch everything around you start to change. Your mind will mess with you, man. When sickness and disease attacks your body, it's like your mind says, you know, it hurts too bad. You don't understand how it feels. It'll never go away. I'm going to be like this all my life. It's all over. That's the kind of stuff that hits everybody. Everybody. But that's where you have to take authority over what's going through your mind and say, no, the Bible says I have what I say, and I have to watch what I think because that's going to inevitably have a lot to do with what I say. Because as a man thinketh, so I need to get my thinking changed, I get my words changed, and I get focused on God, and people freak out on it. You know the little, we're doing great and getting better? I know people make fun of that and laugh and all like that. But the truth is, you ought to be making fun and laughing at, at the other one. Do you know what I'm talking about? How are you doing today? I just fairly meddling, wasn't for bad luck, just wouldn't have any at all down there. I tell you, my dog got run over yesterday, but I expected that. No. <laughs> It's funny, people will tell you that. I expect it. They'd run they chasing them cars all the time. I told my wife he's going to get killed. She didn't believe me, but, but she believes me now. And that's something. You're preaching faith, and you don't like me preaching it, but you'll preach it. You believed your dog was going to get killed and he's dead, and you're saying, see, I told you. Oh, well, people do do that. All right, I'm going to take Ephesians here for the next little bit. I, I wish we could just take the whole book of Ephesians and start reading real slow at the beginning and just stay together until we're finished. Seriously. It's one of the most richest, awesome, little itty-bitty tiny little epistles out of this whole great big Bible. It's just powerful. It's got so much of all the other epistles, uh, revelations crammed in it, and it just keeps confirming stuff. It's awesome. But in chapter 2, he says, and you, of course, this is in the middle of a thought. If I, was, I don't have time to back up too far. But in 22 of the next verse, I'll go there. He put all things under his feet, gave him to be the head over all things to the church, to my Jesus, which is his body, is the fullness of him that filleth all in all. And you, see the thought, he's not through. If we just started reading in that verse, we'd say, and you. But it's and you after, which is his body, and you hath he quickened, made alive. That's what that means. Who were dead in sins and their trespasses and sins, wherein in time past you walked according to the course of the world, according to the prince and the power of the air. Air, 
air, words, speak, spirit. You hear where I'm coming from? It's all the same. Words, spirit, air. All right, when he's, Satan's the prince and the power of the air, he's the prince and power of doubt and unbelief. That's true. And according to the prince and the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. And among whom we also had our conversation in time past. We all used to talk like that. We all used to cuss. Oh, some of you say, I never cuss. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure you never said anything about anybody. Do you know that that's cussing? When you run somebody down? You won't like this. I'll just abbreviate it so I won't scare you. But God can handle you saying GD more than he can you running your brothers and sisters down. See, so you're going, oh, oh, no, that's terrible. It's just we don't realize how much of a sword our tongue is. And we either can pierce somebody's life with it or we can cut them free, set them free. Can I get an amen? Your words are powerful. Isn't it funny how you can just say, I hate you, and how it can just make a person feel? Or you can smile and say, I love you. And they both have such two different ways of touching a person. And then he says, and among whom also we all had our conversation times past, lust of the flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh, and of the mind, and were by nature, it is by nature, the children of wrath, even as others. We all that way, all sinners. All came in this world as a sinner. He says, but God who is rich in mercy, for his great love, wherewith he loved us, and when we were dead in sin. He loved you while you were out there doing it. Whatever doing it was. Whatever that was, he still loved you in it. He never cast you away and he never got rid of you. Even when you were dead in sins, he quickened you. He made you alive. He brought us together. Mm. I don't know about you guys, but this stuff fires me up. Woo. But God who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us ever when we were dead in sins, quickened us together with Christ and by grace are you saved, and hath raised us up together. He's talking about you. Now you're going to find out where you've been raised up to. You just read that you came from heaven. Now you've been raised up. And he says, and has raised us together and made us set together in heavenly places, that's divine authority, in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come, that's today, that he might show the exceeding riches of his grace his kindness towards us through Christ Jesus. God showed us all of his goodness through his son, Jesus Christ, which is God himself incarnate in the flesh, called the son of God, called the son of man, called the redeemer of all mankind, called the savior. Hello, that's who he is, my savior. For by grace, thank God for grace. I, all these people upset about people teaching on grace, I'm sorry, I guess you just can't see what grace is. As much as preachers hate other preachers preaching on grace, the truth is grace is just that forgiving. Joseph Prince teaching on grace, it's so controversial, there's Bible schools won't even let his book in there. But it, what he's teaching is the truth. Oh well, I am not backing him up. I'm not, I don't have to. I don't have to say something to make him look good. I'm just telling you, the man's preaching the truth, and the only people that's screaming against it are carnal-minded people. There's people that are so carnal-minded, they don't even believe, they don't even believe that God would actually step in a human body and live in it. They still think he's somewhere in a temple. What do you think all the rules and regulations are? Jesus set us free from all of the rules and the regulations of the law. All of them, all the commandments of what to do and how to, we've been set free. Now we only got two commandments. We just love the Lord God with all our heart and mind and strength. Hello. And my neighbor's myself. He said, if you do them too, all of it's covered. Because if you're doing that, you're not going to sleep with your brother's wife. If you're doing that, you're not going to steal from him. If you're doing that, you're not going to kill them. And if you're doing, you know where I'm coming from. 
Just do those two things and in that the whole law is fulfilled. And the fulfilling of the law is fulfilled in an act of love. Because Jesus said, if you love me, then you will keep my sayings or my commandments. And some people think that commandment is to go to church on Saturday. Some people think that commandment, and Jesus said, don't you let nobody judge you concerning what day of the week you go to church. He said, let me tell you something about the Sabbath. It was created for you. You were not created for the Sabbath. You and I don't have to go around and bow our knee because it's a Saturday, and we don't have to come to church on a Sunday and feel like we miss God. It's a commandment to be on Saturday, and we showed on Sunday we're going to hell. Are you serious? Yes, there are people that believe that. Christians, I don't have time to go there and mess with that. It's ridiculous. Listen, get in this word. Get this word down in your spirit. And let this word have full course. Because it doesn't see man or woman. It doesn't see black or white. It doesn't see brown, red, or yellow. It is word. It's the word. I remember when the McDowell's came here years ago and something clicked. As soon as they walked in, I just fell in love with them. And then a few months later, I went up and I said, Can I get a picture of y'all? I want a picture of y'all. And I'll do that for certain people that I pick something up. And she said, why, why do you want a picture of us? <laughs> I said, I want to put it in my office. I said, I love you guys. So she brought me a picture of her looking real good. Jerry looked okay. <laughs> and I put that one in my office, and I got it up there, and I see it every day and every time I walk in there, and I look at it, and I speak to them. And all those pictures, I speak to them. Now, some people think, well, that's just silly. If you just put a camera in there and see me walk in, throw my coat on the couch, and just point and talk a little bit and sit in a chair, it looks like nothing. Nothing happened. No big deal. But walking in the Spirit can look just like that. Walking in the Spirit is walking, speaking, and thinking the Word. And so when I walked in my office thinking and speaking the word and looked at the pictures, I look at pictures of those already in heaven and thank God for their life and the seed that they sown. I see those that are going through stuff and just speak to them. I see the McDowell's and I speak to their children and to their family and their grandchildren. They're still wide open. They're raising a little grandbaby. She's so beautiful. Oh, man. But, but the thing is, is we are who God says we are. You're probably getting tired of me saying this, but we can have everything that God said that we can have. And you can do everything that God said you can do. You are the head. You are not the tail. Deuteronomy 28. You are above only. What did you say? Never. Never beneath. And when I see Jesus going out to get Peter standing out on that water, and he started to sink, as they say, and everybody, well, I wonder where he doubted. I thought, listen, I wonder where he got the faith to stand on the water long enough before he sunk. You, you still want to think about he's beginning to sink? I'm still fascinated that he, he just did it. And then it didn't say he sunk. You know what I love about the beginning to sink? It happens to people all the time. You get up and go about your business with God and you're excited and things will start happening. Next thing you know, it's beginning. Mm-hmm. You got it. And, oh, man. I got to hurry up and get out of here, I guess. But God is so good. But we get back, we're going to be getting on some oracles and we're going to have a good time talking about the oracles of God. Now, your food is not from heaven. I want to close out talking about you come from heaven. Your food is from heaven. And I want to show you that your food's from heaven. Let's go to Matthew chapter 4 and verse 4. Matthew 4, 4. And after that, we'll go to Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse 3. Why? One's Old Testament, one's New Testament, and they complement each other. And I want you to see what Jesus and God think about his words. It is manna. Can I get an Amen. And so he answered and he said, It is written, Man, your flesh, shall not live by bread alone. Now, he's not saying you just live by every word of God. He's saying you live by every word that proceedeth. 
Now, what does that mean? Proceedeth. It's just like before the foundation of the world. He had already proceedeth his word. He had already spoken it. And even though the earth hadn't existed, and it's never existed, after he spoke that word, it was on its way. And as funny as it sounds, uh, it's what they call the Big Bang Theory. Really, that's probably what it was. When God said, let there be light, there probably was an explosion. Scientists can see that there was. I, that don't bother me. I, I can see God saying something, let something be, and the universe explode. Of course, we like to take all that and say, now look what an awesome accident this was. But I believe in an awesome God, and I believe that he coordinated this. If this is an accident, gracious, then a real true accident must really be pretty bad. So anyway, this is no accident. You're not an accident. You are from God. And we live by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. The mouth. God's mouth gives you enough power and authority to walk in the earth that demons tremble when you walk into a room. Oh, they do. They do. They know because they don't see you. The anointing that comes on you, that's what they see. And you know who the anointing is? Jesus. When I walk into a hospital room, any room, anywhere, as far as every demonic spirit's concerned, Jesus Christ is there and they can't see Larry's souls. They probably think I got long hair and a big old beard. They can't see me. I'm hid in Christ. You can't find me. Not if you're a demonic spirit. You can't even see me. Because Christ is in me. Christ is on me. And you can't see him. And that means the enemy can't get in me. And that means the enemy ain't allowed to be on me. I've only given that permission to the creator who made me and said, you're not your own. You belong to me. I bought you. I paid for you. I said, Praise God. I didn't realize I was so expensive. Whew. You expensive. You have any idea what you cost? Whew. Oh, gosh. Just stopping to think about that makes me just want to jump up and take off running. Mm-hmm. All right, let's go to the next one, Deuteronomy 8, 3. I know you got it ready. You good. Look at this. And he humbled thee, he suffered thee to hunger, and he fed thee with manna, which thou knewest not. They've been out in the wilderness going through it. Neither did thy fathers know that he might make thee know that man doeth not live by bread alone, or bread only, but by a couple of words by every word that proceedeth. Oh, we're still living on a proceeding word. If God has already spoken something, that's what you can rest your face, faith on, is a proceeding word. And so he makes it real clear, that proceedeth out of the mouth of the Lord doeth man live. My mentor, Guy Steele, when he was in his 80s, went to... Uh, a little nursing home for a couple of weeks for rehab. I went to visit him, and it was lunchtime, and he's sitting at the table with these other seniors, and he always loved witnessing and sharing Christ, and he always looked for the opportunity. And so when I sat down, he was so happy. He knew he could start talking to me about Jesus, and everybody have to listen. That's the way he does it. He's real good. And I sit down, and he got to talking about Jesus, and them other guys was looking, and they kind of turned their backs to him, and he kept talking about Jesus, how awesome he is, how good he is. And then uh, they came in with dessert, and they laid a real nice strawberry cake down in front of all of them. And guys still trying to tell them about the goodness of God. <laughs> and they laid that food down, and the guy picked his fork up, and guys, guys said, Sir, Man does not live by bread alone. And he was going to try to finish it and say, but by every word of God. And that old man looked up at him when he said that, and he said, well, maybe not. He cut him off. He said, well, maybe not. And he said, but he's got to have his dessert. <laughs> I've never forgotten it. It's just always had me tickled thinking about that. But man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes out of the mouth of my God. I live by his words. 
I've been born again by an incorruptible seed, the Word. I have been redeemed by the Word. And the Word made me a Word because I have a more sure Word of prophecy through Christ, which means I am a sure Word out of Him. Because He's the Word from the Father, and I am a Word out of the Word. Are you okay? And all of us together are one mighty big old book. And we can preach it, teach it, shake it, and make it because Jesus is Lord. Amen? I got to turn you guys loose and let you get ready for today. Stand up on your feet with me. I'm going to get ready for the next service. But I'm telling you, God is moving. This is a wonderful day to be alive. Ooh, I'm telling you. Mm, I don't know about you guys, but this is going to be awesome. Awesome. I'm, and don't, I'm not, everybody always wants me to talk about the election. Just let it be what it's going to be. Listen, no matter who ends up being the president, let me tell you what we got to do anyway. Stay to church. Keep our faith in God. Keep our prayers in, in the right place. And all I'm going to tell you about voting is you're born again, you love God, you know what's right, you know what's wrong. And I've always said it, and I'm going to say it again. If the person you're voting for is going to sign the abortion bills, I don't care if it's your favorite party. No. Never kill a baby. Look at somebody and say, don't kill babies. So that right there, that I was born and raised a Democrat. And I'm going to tell you something. When they started signing the abortion bills, I backed off. I'm not telling you don't be a Democrat. I'm telling you as a Christian, when they put that into their bill on that platform, I can't do it. I just can't. I cannot vote for somebody. Do y'all remember when Obama run the first time? Do you remember they asked him about that abortion bill that kills 20,000 babies a day? And he said, if I'm elected, I'll sign it. I got up in church and said, he's going to sign that abortion bill. I don't think we should go that way. And that was taken as don't you vote for a black president. That ain't what I said. I don't care what color he is. I don't care if it's a man or a woman. I just want him qualified and, and at least moral. I don't want to have to deal with having to kill babies and not kill babies or, or immoral judgments or ungodliness. You guys know who's who. Use, use your spirit. Let God speak. Go in that voting booth and say, God, no matter what happens when this is over, we've all got to obey you. We've got to do your word no matter what. I can't live for you like a Republican. I can't live for you like a Democrat. I've got to live for you like a child of God. And just let God move in your life. And don't let that junk divide you from your friends and your family. Don't you sit at the table and argue with them and get mad and boisterous because of your party. It doesn't matter. Your party's going to poop and pass away anyway. There was a day it never existed, and there's a day coming it'll never exist. It's passing through. You and I are passing through. And praise God, while we're here, let's put our mark on this planet. You leave your initials on the tree like Daniel Boone did. Hello. When you're gone, they'll still see. Hey, DB was here. Hello. Man, I'm telling you, mark it all. Mark it. Mark your children. Mark your job. Mark the desires of your heart. Call the thing that be not as though it were. Speak to the mountain. Command it. They didn't say ask it. Command it. Be thou cast into the sea. Doubt not in your heart. Believe the things that you say shall come to pass. You shall have whatsoever you say. Woo! Man, how many times we got to hear it? You are a word out of the word. Speak the word. Don't speak corrupt communication out of your mouth. Only that which is good for the use of edifying. Ministers, grace to the hearer. God bless you. Go do the word. Woo!